So now in this video we'll discuss about some basic things or basic features about the C++ programming language. And initially we need to discuss about what are the different characteristics of the C++ programming language, what are the tokens which are which are used. But I think if you are if you are coming here to study the C++ programming language, then I believe that you already know some of the basic things about the C programming language because most of the things which are valid for the C programming language, they are also valid for the C++ programming language. Okay. Now in case of C++ programming language, we use something called as data types. Okay, there's something called as oh, let me rub it. Now there's something called as data types. Now there are three types of data types we generally use. Some first is called as primitive data types. Primitive data types. The second one is called as the user defined data type. The user defined data types. And third one is the derived data types derived data types okay so I could have written it like this this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one okay so for the primitive data types there are some data types like we have integer character float we have integer we have character we have float we have long okay so long is actually not a primitive data type so we use double Okay, so you can say long is also a primitive here. Long, okay, right. So long is also a primitive data types here. Now the size of integer is of four byte. The size of float is of four byte. The size of double is of eight byte, as well as the size of long is more than that. Okay, so we'll do one thing. Um, we know what is the size of character. I know what is the size of long. In case of C programming language, the size of character is of one byte. The size of long is of four byte, and um, we'll see some of the uh, no, data types, some of the things which we use before them. For example, we know something something called a short int, there's something called as long int, and sometimes instead of writing long int, we only write long. Okay. And then when we discuss about the user defined data types, now the user defined data types in case of C language we studied structures. Now those <coughs> I'm sorry. For the user defined data types we studied structures so those structures are also available in uh, C++ as well as there is an extension of structure which is actually called as a classes so classes actually they are the user defined data types a part of classes we can have unions and we can have something called as enums they are also available in uh, as a user defined data types then we have something called as derived data types derived data types like arrays and there's some other uh, new data types which are there like vectors etc etc so we'll take them one by one so initially we'll start with the primitive data types and as i told you what are you already know what is an integer what is a character what is a float what is a double and what is a long i believe you already studied the my videos of c programming language so let us discuss about the integer data types so here we'll be making programs related to the integer data type now you can see I can store some integer variables inside the integer data types. So we'll start with the primitive data types and then let us do one thing. First of all, let us start with the first data type that is called as integer as a data type. Now what is the work of the integer data type? It stores integer number. It stores integer numbers. Now only storing integer number is not enough. We have to print or we have to use those integer numbers okay so what you can do is you can declare a variable like this integer a is equal to 5 that means there's some memory is allocated which is storing a now we can perform various actions on this integer variable a that is fine i think this is a very simple thing you already know this but for the sake of completion i'm covering it so we have integer a is equal to 5 that means a is this variable which is storing the value 5 now i can do c out and I can print the value of a. Fine, that's okay, that's good, right? Now, I can just uh, go to build and I'm running the program and now it is printing the value which is 5 which you can see here, 
Okay, so those who are concerned about what is what, what uh, compiler I'm using, this is a code blocks compiler which is using GCC as a background. So in the code blocks compiler, I'm executing the C++ programs. Okay, and here you can see in this compiler, this is the header file. We have something called the header file. We have uh, this in as using namespace std so we'll be discussing about this one and why i'm writing the namespace std because in the initial versions of c++ programming language we used to execute them on turbo c etc etc you 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 have used those software in your colleges and most of the colleges are not actually using code blocks but uh, the top uh, no the latest one or you can say uh, some colleges very good colleges they are using code blocks uh, to teach the C and C++ programming language to the students and even the data structures and uh, we know there's a main function here okay that I think that you understood this that is not a problem at all you have an idea about this one okay now uh, here in this case you can see this integer is a variable uh, of type integer and is storing the value 5 that's fine and I'm using this C out to print the value C out just like in C language uh, we used uh, something called as printf statement we used printf to print some values right and we have we used scanf to scan some values or to take input from the user okay so this is used to print something on screen print on screen and this is used to print output okay so this is sorry this is to take input from the user to take input from user from user okay now in case of C++ programming language we mostly use C out and C in C out and C in C out is used to print something onto the screen and C in is used to print uh, to so C in is used to take input from the user and C out is used to print something on the screen Okay, now as I told you that C++ is a super set of C language. If this is representing the C++ language, then C++ is actually a super set of C language. That means these functionalities of printf and scanf, they should also be available in C++. And yes, they are available. You can even do printf and scanf in case of C++. Right? But there you have to use a different header file. So here I am using the header file which is hash include stdi iostream.h iostream.h the full form is input output stream input and output stream this is iostream.h okay and this iostream.h is actually it is defining the functionalities of uh, c in and c out that is giving some output to the user and uh, taking some input from the user okay but if you want to use the, these functionalities of printf and scanf then I have to include that header file which is stdio.h which is the standard input output .h now let us see can we do that here in this program so can we take input from the user with the header file which is stdio.h here so I am going to write hash include stdio.h as a header file <coughs> I'm so sorry so to change the line I can write end l now I can also do printf percentage d comma a that means I'm printing the value of a again now if I go to build and I build and run the program now you can see I'm printing the value 5 there is no errors in the program right there is no errors in the program we are still printing the value 5 right that means you have you to use you can even use the functionalities you can even use the functions which are available in C and C++ to uh, which are available in C language even in the C++ programming language you can use printf you can use scanf that is fine that's available I think you already understood this and uh, I have explained this okay now we were discussing about the data types which is the integer as a data type now I, I told you in the previous video uh, what is an integer as a data type for integer as a data type uh, uh, the size of integer so we need to understand what is the size of integer number one second 
how can you store the integer values that means that I'm telling you it is storing integer values okay and you can easily find out what is the maximum value and what is the minimum value so we'll do one thing so integer values third one is we'll be discussing about the range of integer values uh, which will be start which this variable can store and a part of that we discuss about size we take integer values and third one is range and fourth one is some examples okay some examples the first one is the size of integer value uh, variable size so as, as i told you the size of integer variable is of four bytes but how can you tell how can you prove that the size of integer variable is four bytes so what we can do is we'll be writing a program for this switch so will tell what is the size of a integer variable now i'm going to write there's something called as uh, size of function so i'm going to write the c out statement and here i'm going to take the size of function and the size of function i'm going to write int now this size of function is just going to return the size of the integer variable okay and here i can even write get char that means get character okay uh, i think you already know this so get ch this get catch so let us execute this one it is saying the size of a integer is 4 byte and because of this get char it will take one character as input and then it will terminate okay so let me do one thing uh, let me change the line that is end l okay now you will see what is why i used get char okay so again i'm going to go to build and i'm going to build and run the program now here you can see we printed the value 4 and this 4 is actually because this is the size of the integer variable the size of function is printing the value 4 and this get char is that means we are going to take one character from the user and that character can be anything for example we can use take a next line character from the user to take the next line character i am just going to press enter or return so enter and then it took that value and then you can see uh, we can easily right so the program execution finished so execution time of the program was 24.71 second so 717 seconds so it uh, the program was ran for 24 seconds here okay now that was the first thing what is the size of integer size of integer is a 4 byte second thing is what is that it takes integer values okay it takes integer values how can you say it takes integer values i can store integer a is equal to 5 that's fine that's okay obviously right now I can print C out the value of A that's good and uh, if I'm just going to print the value of A then I bring end L so it should print this value I'm going to go to build and I'm going to run the program now okay so there's a semicolon here build and run the program now you can see it printed the value which is 5 that's okay that's fine that's very good I understand that but what if I try to store 5.3 inside this integer variable a now what is this 5.3 first of all you understand what is this 5.3 what is the type can you say it is a float variable value no it is not a float value at all because any point number by default is a double number but the c and c++ compilers they are having automatic type conversion right so that is automatically they will convert this to integer or float so we'll be having automatic type conversion okay so now if I try to execute this program I'll go to build and I'll try to execute this program now you can see it is still printing the value 5 it is not round off round off means sometimes what people do is when I'm saying round off they think that if I'm writing 5.9 then 5.9 should be printed as 6 no this is called as round off we are not rounding off the values okay we are printing the exact values for example here even if I convert it to 5.99 or just 5.9 now if I go to build and I try to run the program now you can see it is still printing the value 5 that means from this val variable it is only accepting the integer part it is not accepting the decimal value that is 0.9 value okay this is the first thing second is can i take a better example for this one obviously yes i can take okay so let me show you a better example to show that it takes integer values okay so what will be that example just assume that if i'm going to take integer a 
is equal to 5 divided by 10. Now this 5 divided by 10 is 0 0.5. No, it is not 0 0.5. Already discussed this in the previous videos. That 5 divided by 10 is actually 0. Why it is 0? Because 5 is an integer. 10 is an integer and you, when you say integer divided by integer then it is going to give you only integer integer divided by integer is integer okay so that means when I'm saying 5 divided by 10 it should only give an integer value which is 0 but if I do 5.0 divided by 10 now this is a double number assuming at uh, saying for simplicity I'm saying float because most of you are more comfortable with saying float but this is actually a double number by default unless you store this double number inside a floating point variable then it will be converted to a float okay see let me tell you one thing let me tell you very basic difference if i'm writing 5.0 or 5.1 or any value after point it can be 5.99 now any variable any value this is a by default a double number but but if i'm writing 5.0 f now because of this f this particular f now this variable is of type float okay if i'm even if i'm writing 5f 5f means this variable is of type float or this value is of type float to give a value as float you have to implicitly write f you have to write it f okay without writing f it will be a double value if it, it is having some kind of decimal or point after this one okay so we'll discuss that in the little videos don't worry we'll take that example when we'll discuss about the float now right now we're discussing about the integer variable okay now you understand that when i'm saying 5 divided by 10 that means it is a uh, it is going to print a value which is a in integer value and that integer value is zero so even if i'm going to execute the program i'm going to go to build and build and run you now again you can see the value which is printed is zero so it printed a value which is zero okay that's good that's fine i understand this i know you also understand this one good now what if i'm writing integer a integer a is equal to 5 divided by 10 multiplied by 6 or integer b is equal to 6 multiplied by 5 divided by 10 these are two different values 5 divided by 10 multiplied by 6 or 6 multiplied by 5 divided by 10 those of you who are watching my videos for the first time then you understand then you will say that definitely these two are exactly the same values but they are not the same values i already explained this one why because we are not studying mathematics at all in mathematics we follow the rule of board mass right that is board mass rules first of all we are going to do brackets then we'll solve off then we'll solve division multiplication addition and subtraction that means division is having higher priority as compared to multiplication but in case of c c plus plus dot net or java in these programming languages we do not consider the board mass rule we consider something called as operator precedence and associativity now when i'm saying operator precedence and associativity operator precedence and associativity now this operator precedence of division multiplication and modulus it is exactly the same precedence of plus and minus it is exactly the same but associativity of these operators is left to right left to right left to right when i'm saying left to right it means if i'm having a multiplied by b multiplied by c if i'm having two multiplications operated together now because the precedence of both the multiplications are same so we are going to take the associativity into consideration and the associativity is left to right okay that means and initially we'll evaluate this one first and then we'll evaluate this one one that means in a multiplied by b multiplied by c initially we'll be evaluating a multiplied by b then we'll be evaluating the result with multiplication by c now in the same way when we talk about this expression that means integer a is equal to 5 divided by 10 multiplied by 6 now in this expression the precedence of multiplication and division is exactly the same so if the precedence is same then we take about the associativity so in the first expression we will we'll be evaluating 5 divided by 10 first and then we'll be evaluating multiplied by 6 now in the second expression first of all we'll be evaluating 6 multiplied by 5 and then we'll be evaluating multiplied by 
10 or so divide divide by 10 so the output of the first expression is 5 divided by 10 is 0 0 multiplied by 6 is 0 so output of the first expression will be 0 In the next expression 6 multiplied by 5 the 6 multiplied by 5 is 30 and 30 divided by 10 is 3 so output will be 0 and 3 so let me prove it to you if this is uh, 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 you know, difficult to follow let me prove it to you okay so I'm going to take two variables here two integer variables here that is a and b so I'm doing integer a is equal to 5 divided by 10 multiplied by 6 and then I'm doing taking integer b is equal to 6 multiplied by 5 divided by 10 correct now I'm, I'm printing the value of a as well as okay I'm printing the value of a as well as I'm printing the value of b so this is the value for b and I'm printing the value of a okay now let us print so I go to build I'm going to build and run so again you can see the values which are printed are 0 and 3 0 and 3 make sure don't make this kind of silly mistakes in your future it is going to make print 0 and 3 this is about the integer variables okay correct I think you understood this one now the third point is we want to discuss about the range of these integer variables range <coughs> so let us discuss about this one first let me wrap this uh, extra spaces extra values here okay let me do one thing let me delete everything fine so the range of in integer variables range and what is this range range means what is the maximum value it can take or what is the minimum value it can take as I told you the size of integer variable is of 4 bytes in case of 4 bytes how many bits are there there are 32 bits in 4 byte and these integer numbers are 2's complement numbers they are 2's complement numbers 2's complement means <coughs> Uh, that means if there are n bits to represent then the minimum value will be minus 2 raised to power n minus 1 2 maximum value will be plus 2 raised to power n minus 1 minus 1 this is the benefit of using 2's complement numbers okay now we don't use uh, 1's complement we don't use 0's uh, sign bit representation in C and C++ language in some of the books it is given as wrong keep it in mind the you know the minimum value in 2's complement if there are n bits then it is minus 2 raised to power n minus 1 2 maximum plus 2 raised to power n minus 1 minus 1 that means if the integer is of 4 bytes that means 32 bits so the minimum value be, will be minus 2 raised to power uh, 31 2 maximum value will be plus 2 raised to power 31 minus 1 2 raised to power 31 minus 1 now what is this minus 2 raised to power 31 okay so if I'm writing 2 raised to power 31 then this is actually 2 raised to power 10 multiplied by 2 raised to power 10 multiplied by 2 raised to power 10 multiplied by 2 then only 2 raised to power 1 then only it is 2 raised to power 31 we know what is 2 raised to power 10 it is 1024 this is 1024 this is 1024 and this is 2 so we are multiplying these numbers so let us do one thing let us open a calculator and find out what is this value so we'll go to the start menu and this is calculator yeah so this is calculator now let us evaluate this value so it is 1024 and we'll be having multiplication 1024 again multiplication 1024 again multiplication as 2 so the value is this much this is a very large number let me write it down for you for simplicity so this value is 2 1 4 7 4 8 3 6 4 8 this is the maximum value for this integer value and what is the minimum value minimum value will be 2 1 4 7 comma 4 8 3 comma 6 4 7 that means you subtracted 1 from here so so this is the minimum value actually so this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value so minimum value will be minus this one 2 maximum value will be plus this one so let us try it out let us try to store these values inside these integer variables okay and uh, let us do let us execute this one 
so we'll be having integer a is equal to minus uh, 2147483648 and then I'm trying to print the value of a okay so let us execute build and run so happily it printed this value and there is no problem whatsoever fine that's good what if I give a lower value within this that is 2649 so that means build and run now you see this is not printing a value which we wanted to print right it is not taking this value as a negative number so when we when we took minus this as 48 now it is printing perfectly it is saying it is a minus 21474836 that means it is a negative range but if you take a value greater than this now it is not taking a value which we, we wanted to print and rather than it is giving some random values actually this random value is about how this uh, this uh, number will be stored inside the memory and then how this number will be represented okay so this is about the negative part but if we have a positive number so in case of positive number the maximum value can be this much as we have written so if I build and if I run so the value is 21474836647 that's perfectly fine it is printing a perfect value that's correct what if we try to print 8 now it should not print the exact value so you can see it is printing a negative value how why because the binary equivalent of this value is actually presenting a, a negative number because we are using two's complement numbers here so for this you can go back and you understand what is the two's complement representation for this one okay i think this is clear sound and clear about the integer variables now let us discuss about the other variables that is character float and uh, we'll be discussing about the long and all these variables in detail after this okay